This is David Johnson with an update on the amino acid metabolism big picture. This is update 2018, and I hope it's useful to you. This is the big picture, and I've done various things to make it a little better and uh, corrected a couple of errors, and the major blood amino acids are alanine and glutamine, and the essential amino acids are the branch chain, valine, isoleucine, and leucine, and threonine, which can sort of be considered a branch chain with a hydroxyl group on it, and methionine methionine and methionine it, it normally goes on to cysteine but if you don't have enough methionine then cysteine can become an essential amino acid phenylalanine and tryptophan are the aromatics that are essential normally enough phenylalanine is converted into tyrosine but in pku phenylalanine can't be converted to tyrosine and then so tyrosine also becomes essential there and then the uh, positively charged amino acids lysine histidine and arginine arginine is thought to be mainly uh, essential only for infants and not adults, uh, but it's a, it plays a very important role and doesn't have, hurt to, to have more of it. Uh, we can't make these amino acids, and so any of these amino acids that are missing in adequate amounts, we will start breaking down muscle tissue to do that. And in Kwashiorkor is a malnutrition disease seen in uh, developing countries and places where there's a famine and war, like Somalia at present. And these children are uh, will die of this disease, and they have stunted growth and permanent mental disabilities from it. So it's very important to have an adequate protein intake. Now, arginine and glutamine are conditional. There are conditional deficiencies of that reported, and uh, glutamine is one of the major amino acids in the blood, and as is arginine. And glutamine can be used to make arginine, so they're both of them are very are inter interrelated in this regard. So, it, arginine is essential for neonates and it makes nitric oxide. That nitric oxide is a vasodilator and very important. And glutamine is also thought to be insufficient in many neonates due to the stress of their growing so quickly. And then they, it's also need for protein synthesis to make nucleotides and NAD. It also goes on to make ornithine, and the ornithine can be used for arginine and urea cycle, so it's a real important amino acid as well. And arginine can be used to reduce blood pressure because if you have a vasodilator uh, that like nitric oxide, it also gets transported by hemoglobin, can reduce your blood pressure. And uh, some, some in Italy, they are now making uh, ibuprofen with with, uh, as an arginine salt, and that's thought to be quite good for that. Uh, glutamine is also being used as a new treatment in sickle cell anemia and reduces the pain at attacks of pain. Histamine is, a, is also a vasodilator and it's found in mast cells. And histamine uh, can is a major reason for anal, anaphylactic shock. So mast cells that are loaded have an IgE on the surface. That IgE is say you're against peanuts and you have peanut allergy and you eat a peanut, then all that all those mast cells degranulate. And they release so much histamine that you go into anaphylactic shock. Your blood pressure drops so fast you die. So, so not a very nice disease, but it happens. Uh, this is the shows the TCA cycle, and at the very top of it, we're going to look at the glucose uh, going to. Uh, 3-phosphoglycerate and then on to serine and then serine goes to pyruvate and pyruvate can be used to make alanine via transamination and serine also provides a lot of methyl groups by going to glycine. We also need a lot of glycine. So when that uh, serine methyl group is transferred to glycine, uh, transferred, it, it's accepted by tetrahydrofolate to make methylene tetrahydrofolate and that very that's a very important step in the uh, one carbon uh, handling that we see. This is the transamination reaction that requires pyridoxal phosphate and glutamate goes to alanine. Uh, the amino group gets transferred to, pyru from py to pyruvate to make alanine and then that goes in to make the, takes the carbon skeleton of glutamate and makes alpha ketoglutarate and it requires pyridoxal phosphate, vitamin B6, and it's called serum glutamate pyruvate transaminase, or also called alanine transaminase, ALT, or SGPT, and glutamate, and remember, is the predominant amino acid in the blood, followed by alanine. 
The glutamate is also dehydrogenated by de glutamate dehydrogenase, and this is the way of providing ammonia out of the glutamate to make urea, and that requires NAD to NADH. This is reversible, uh, and, but that requires NADPH to NADP. Uh, the, the ammonia produced is usually urea. This reaction primarily goes from left to right, from glutamate to, to ammonia because you're all doing that. But in cases where you have a lot of ammonia buildup, you go back into reverse, and that's not a good thing. Glutaminase also is, provides ammonia and to make urea, and it, it provides it via taking off the amino group off the side chain of the gl glutamine to make glutamate, and then that makes you uh, provides that one one group, and then of course the glutamate can then go through glutamate dehydrogenase to provide more ammonia. And so here is the urea cycle that starts out with CO2 and ammonia, and it's first acted on by carbamyl phosphate synthetase. And carbamyl, carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 it has an absolute requirement for the cofactor in acetyl glutamate that's made only for that purpose. And if you, its uh, synthesis, is, however, is inhibited by propionyl CoA, and so B12 deficiencies also res, uh, can result in high levels of propionyl CoA, and so that uh, can slow this down as well. So a B12 deficiency can slow that first step in the urea cycle, and that occurs in the mitochondria. Then the carbamyl phosphate is acted on by. Uh, ornithine transcarbamylase along with ornithine to make citrulline. If that enzyme ornithine transcarbamylase is missing, then you wind up with an erotic aciduria. Aciduria, and that's because the excess carbamyl phosphate that's not being used to make citrulline then gets transported out into the cytosol or leaks out into the cytosol where it's acted on by the pyrimidine biosynthesis pathway to make erotic acid. Now the other products of the citrulline goes on to combine with aspartic acid to make arginosuccinate and that requires another couple of ATP there and then arginosuccinate gets cleaved into fumarate and arginine and arginine gets acted on by arginase to make ornithine and urea and you've completed the cycle. So, uh, but the, carbam the ornithine transcarbamylase is the major uh, problem that you see and it's an X-link uh, deficiency disease and results in orotate. So always be looking for that orotate in, and when you see orotate in the stem of the question, you know it's a carbamyl phosphate or ornithine transcarbamylase problem and, or, and carbamyl phosphate is being made, but it's getting spilling out out of the mitochondria. Right. So here is the pathway for phenylalanine. Phenylalanine normally goes to tyrosine, <coughs> except in the disease phenylketonuria. Uh, and phenylalanine hydroxylase, the enzyme at this step, requires tetrahydrobiopterin. And if it's not there, then the, the people that have this disease wind up with low IQs. <coughs> also, phenylalanine, when there's a blockage there, gets converted into phenylacetate and phenylpyruvate. Tyrosine then goes on to normally goes on to make dihydroxyphenylalanine or DOPA and that requires another tetrahydrobiopterin step it's a requiring step. DOPA goes to melanin and the enzyme for that is uh, tyrosinase so ty tyrosinase deficiency results in albinism and there's a therm temperature dependent tyrosinase in uh, Siamese cats and that's why they have darker ears and paws because their tyrosinase is normally not working in their body when it's warm but out in the cold areas of their feet and ears it works. DOPA also goes on to make norepinephrine and epinephrine and that requires s methionine to make epinephrine so you to, to make those and that's a fight or flight response for from adrenaline is another term for epinephrine. So and then homogentisate, tyrosine goes to make homogentisate, which then goes on to make fumarate. And there can be a block there called alcaptonuria. And the alcaptonuria results in a darkened urine on standing. Uh, usually we don't let our urine sit around very long 
now, but it used to be that people did, uh, that, <clears throat> and then they would uh, notice that it turned dark and it worried them a lot. It causes a uh, problem with some arthritic-like problems because of the deposits of the homogentisate in the tissues, in the joints, and uh, in the vertebra of the back, and things of that sort. But it's not a really severe, not a terribly severe disease. Nothing like PKU. This is the uh, part of the pathway where you see tryptophan use. Tryptophan goes to niacin, and if it doesn't go to niacin uh, then because of Hartnup's pellagra, then you wind up with a pellagra-like disease, and that's called the three Ds, diarrhea, dermatitis, and dementia. Uh, tryptophan uh, goes on to also to make melatonin and serotonin. Uh, in the, around the turn of the century after the Civil War, a lot of people in the South were living almost exclusively on a corn diet that it had the husk removed of where the niacin was, and therefore they developed a lot of uh, niacin deficiencies. They weren't getting much uh, tryptophan. They had min the number of animals had been reduced by the armies that had gone through, and so people were starving to death on living on corn, and there was a lot of pellagra. There was, pele there was a pellagra hospital actually over in Greenville, South Carolina, and that's all they did is treat pellagra. Now, we also have in this uh, serotonin and melatonin require BH4 as well, tetrahydrobiopterin, to make those. Leucine and lysine. Uh, leucine goes to alpha keto acids, and as does isoleucine and valine, and more alpha keto acids down here in the bottom. And if those don't don't go, you then you have maple syrup urine disease. You can't convert those alpha keto acids on, and that's a dehydrogenase step. Uh, that's a that's the branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase, and that requires thiamine, and that occurs in the mitochondria. And so uh, that in some cases you can treat with thiamine. So remember, maple syrup urine disease is, a, is the second, second step in the, is the dehydrogenase step, not the transaminase step. Leucine and lysine are both ketogenic amino acids. They're the only two strictly ketogenic amino acids that we have. So remember that quite often on step one exams. So here is the uh, process for, by which we take methyl tetrahydrofolate and convert it N5N10 methylene tetrahydrofolate and make 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, which is then used to convert homocysteine into methionine. We can recycle our homocysteine to methionine. Methionine normally is an essential amino acid. It goes from methionine to make s methionine, which is a universal methyl donor. There are about 40 different reactions that require uh, SAM to as the methyl donor Ep, to make epinephrine, I've said, histones and DNA as well, and then homocysteine then normally goes on combining with serine to make cystothionine. But if cystothionine synthetase is deficient, then there's the disease homocysteinuria. And homocysteinuria results in a buildup of uh, homocysteine, and that causes a atherosclerosis at, young, at a very young age. And it's, uh, so you need B6, B12, and folate to prevent that, especially methylfolate, because a lot of us are missing our uh, methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase as a common deficiency. And it's, uh, for me, for example, mine only works at about 60% normal. So you need that, uh, we need methylfolate primarily as supplements rather than folate. So it's better to have methylfolate as supplement than, than in your vitamins than have this folate. Then the, the, you can use that methylfolate because if you can't do this reduction enzyme, then you wind up with a folate deficiency. It winds up all stuck in the other forms of methylfolate. Uh, and so methionine synthetase requires B12. We have two B12 requiring steps here. One, to convert homocysteine back into methionine, and the other one to convert methylmalonyl-CoA to succinyl-CoA using methylmalonyl-CoA mutase. So propionyl-CoA, which comes from branch chain amino acids and from odd-numbered fatty acids, requires a biotinylation step to add an extra carb car carboxyl group. And then that gets converted onto methylmalonyl-CoA. 
and Patricia Stallings is a lady in Missouri that had a, a child that had this disease of methylmalonic aciduria. They thought she had poisoned the child with uh, uh, antifreeze, but it turned out she had not. Remember that B, so we have these, this shows the two B12 requiring steps. Pernicious anemia results from the inability of uh, usually the lack of intrinsic factor, def defect in making intrinsic factor, because you have to have intrinsic factor to bind B12 in the stomach, and it's made by the parietal cells of the stomach that also make the acid. Some people take a lot of proton pump inhibitors to reduce acid production and stop acid reflux, and that's good. But the problem with that is you also turn off the parietal cells and they don't make intrinsic factor, so you've got to make sure these people get another source of B12, either uh, sublingual tablets or injections, and those are available now. So, so, so see the B6 and the B12 and folate is very important knowing so uh, important things to know here all right so we're back to the big picture again and that's the end thank you bye bye